Hi, this is Larry Jordan. Let's answer another Final Cut Studio question. When compressing for DVD, do I tweak any settings, asks Matt, to get a better picture? He's been using the 90-minute DVD template that comes with compressor, and the answer is yes, I do tweak. Ethan asks, is um, LTO the successor to DLT, and the answer is yes. Um, it's not a direct succession, but it's close enough. If we find, look for Apple and go down to DVD, and we select the DVD best 90 minutes, notice that we have two compression settings here. The MPEG-2 creates the video, and Dolby creates the audio. With MPEG-2, I make two tweaks. Oh, oh, really important rule. We're going to talk compression for a bit, but really important. Forget what your source footage is. When you're compressing, the source footage is irrelevant, whether it's HD or SD or still images or whatever, VHS, it doesn't make any difference. Whenever you're compressing, you only care about what your final output format is going to be. Compressor will figure out how to get from the source to the output. So a lot of people say, I want to compress for a DVD, but I've got an HD piece of video and it's like 800 billion gigabytes in size. I don't care. doesn't make any difference. Compressor will handle all of that. All you need to focus on is what's the final output format. What's the image size you want of the final image? I've compressed stuff for the web and it ends up being 2 megabytes in size and it started off at, at, at 3 gigabytes. Well, the file size of where it starts out is not relevant. The format of what it starts out is relevant to compressor, but not relevant to us. We only need to care about the final output format. So whether I'm starting with HDV or AVC HD or P2 makes no difference. If I'm going to compress it to a DVD, it always and only ends up as a standard def program. All DVDs on Final Cut, all DVDs in general, in the world, DVD by definition means standard definition. Blu-ray means high definition. DVD means standard definition. So if your goal is to, to shoot HD for the purposes of putting it on a DVD, you will have marginally better quality, but keep in mind that all that great and glorious HD imagery is going to disappear because it's going to get shrunk down to be standard def. So here's the settings change. Notice I've selected the MPEG-2. I go to the second button in Compressor, and I say that's the encoder, and I go to Quality. Notice that the average bit rate is 6.2, and the maximum bit rate is 7.7. .7. For me, I don't like them that big. I want to make them a little bit smaller. I like the results. And the reason is compressor and DVD Studio Pro are optimized for an average bit rate of 6 megabits a second. So let's just uh, add a file here. <laughs> There's a standard definition file, 4x3. I click on the MPEG-2. I click on qual Oops, i got to drag it up here. And here's the change that I make. I change my average bit rate to 5.5, and I change my maximum bit rate to 7.2. Just decreases the bit rate just a little bit. Of all the DVDs I've done, I've not had any complaints about quality. And that's the only difference that I make in terms of all the presets for DVD. It allows me to get about an extra 10 minutes of material on a DVD. Everything looks just ducky. A compressionist, a person that makes their living compressing, will say every movie is different, and that's true. And there will be times where you need to make adjustments, that's also true. But if you want my standard settings before I have to tweak, and I very, very rarely tweak, average bit rate of 5.5 and a maximum bit rate of 7.2. With Dolby Digital, here I do make some changes. And the reason is Apple licensed Dolby Digital direct from Dolby, and they were not given the ability, Apple was not given the ability, to make changes to the setting. And there's three settings that trip us up. The first is, notice down here, when I select Dolby Digital, under the Audio tab, notice Dialog Normalization is set to negative 27. This is Dolby messing with the mix. You want to set this to negative 31. That means that it will pass through all the audio exactly as you've mixed it without making any level changes. Second thing that you want to do is go to the pre-processing tab, also inside Dolby Digital, go to the pre-processing tab, and change the compression preset from film standard compression to none.
What none does is it doesn't apply any dynamic range compression to your mix. In other words, by setting pre-processing compression preset to none and audio dialogue normalization to negative 31, you are taking the audio exactly as you've mixed it and you are burning that audio exactly as you've mixed it onto the DVD so you're not making any changes to it. That's what I recommend in terms of how I tweak DVD settings. I do other tweaks for H.264, but for right now, that's DVD. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching.